Hi everybody and welcome to our series Van Lifers Real Story from the Road. In this episode we met Mike Hudson aka Van Dog Traveler. Some of you might have already seen him in our documentary movie, but this is the full interview where he chat about how he managed finances, how he built his van and what it's like to travel alone in a van and of course much much more. Enjoy. I'm Mike. What do I do? I guess I travel full time in a van around Europe. I've been traveling for like three years, maybe over three years now. Before this, I had um, I had like a job, um, probably like a normal careerish kind of job, mainly in an office. Um, I was getting bored, and I decided to. Quit. What was your inspiration for living in a van? I guess by default, this is what we all do. Like I, I went to university, I got a degree in like electronic engineering, and um, this is like su a subject that I love. Um, so just by default, I got a job, and then I realised maybe, maybe this isn't so fun. Like I guess I had everything that you meant to have a good job and stuff and a, my own place, a car and things like this. But I just found myself being quite bored and I just got really tired and fed up and sick of it. I probably had this idea since school that I wanted to do something with a van. Like, I was always interested in sound system culture, pirate radio culture in the UK. In school when I was like 15 I always wanted to build a sound system and put it into a van and then like go around and have parties and stuff. I always wanted my first car to be a van <laughs> and then I also wanted to run a radio station from a van like a pirate station so we could move around and um, we wouldn't get tracked and then when I was 25 when I was bored sat in the office the thoughts of the van came again, but then I thought, actually, I could use it as my full-time home, you know. I started looking at vans. I bought this van as, like, a, a, a broken, empty van in all my spare time, in my lunch breaks, and in, in, like, in the evenings, I was researching how to convert a van, how to, you know, make it into a space that, that is, like, fully livable. I didn't know anything about the camper van thing or the motorhome thing. I'd never been in a motorhome. I kind of just did it my own way, made made things up as I went along. Were you inspired by anybody? I think I went in blind. The only people that I knew who lived in vans were um, like traveling sound systems. And at that time, I didn't even I didn't see anything on social media, you know, about the van life thing. I, I don't, I don't remember. I just remember being like desperate to um, have a van that I could live in and travel in, and like, uh, I had no idea how it could be possible. I didn't know anyone personally that was doing it. I wish I did, because it would have made it easier. How did you make it happen? I saved up like 10 grand, which was like a random number, but it was more money than I'd ever had, so I thought it was enough. I spent five and a half thousand pounds on the, on the van and conversion, everything together. And then at that point, as I was building the van, as I was spending all this money, yeah, I had no idea if it would work. But at the same time, I knew that I had to make it work because I'd quit my job. If I didn't quit my job, I probably never would have built the van. How have you managed financially? I really didn't know. So I had roughly, well, I had four and a half thousand pounds to travel with. And, you know, I worked out roughly, like, if I spend this much a day, it'll last six months. If I spend this much a day, it'll last a year. So in that first year, I tried to spend as little as possible, like I was insane. I wouldn't even buy like a sponge to wash the dishes. 
yeah, I was volunteering a lot. I was like eating for free in these like communities and things like this, spending as little as possible. But I had the best time ever. Like it was excellent. It was the least. I, it's that was the least I spent in my whole life. But it was the best time I've ever had. Where have you travelled? I set off with two friends. I went down to Spain. Hung around Spain for a bit. I thought it was a really good country to like, as like an introduction to this life. Really, like it was a nice country to start off in. And then my friends left. They went back to their normal, normal lives in the UK. And then I was on my own for the first time. Uh, I went through Switzerland, Austria, Hungary. Spent a while in Hungary. This is where we're at. <laughs> and then as it got um, as it got colder, I I went uh, south through Romania and Bulgaria. And then it got really cold in the mountains. <laughs> it got way too cold, so I, I just drove. I just kept driving until I got to Greece. And then I kept driving until I got to like Athens. And then it was sunny and people were on the beach. <laughs> and it was December. So I spent my winter in Greece. Uh, and it was really good. Greece was excellent. I spent seven months in Greece. What is it like to travel alone? By default, I'm on my own, but I've also experienced, like, friends have come out to the van, travelled with me for a few weeks or months, and then I've met people as well. I don't know. So I like both worlds, but they're both very different. Travelling alone, I mean, there are loads of challenges. Everything's harder on your own, just from the practical things, like driving is a bit harder, but... I guess you get used to it. I like being alone. <laughs> like, not all the time, but like, I um, I get a lot from being, like exploring things, just alone, being totally free, going where I want, not having to think about, like, it sounds quite selfish. So it's like a totally different experience. Um, when I'm alone, it's things are a lot more personal in some way, uh, magical. I like to be, I like to discover things on my own. I like to explore. I like to do my own thing, have my own routine and things like this. But I love it with friends as well. I've never had, never felt like, um, lonely, you know, I think there's too much to do. Probably like more lonely in my other life. <laughs> And I was around a lot of people. But it seems to happen naturally. Like, whenever I'm, like, whenever I've been alone for ages, I'll suddenly just... It's like someone will come or something will happen and I'll meet someone and then it'll be, like, I could spend two months completely alone and then suddenly out of nowhere someone will come and we'll spend, like, a full-on week in or month or whatever travelling around... After a month, I'm ready to be alone again. Is there anything you miss? I don't miss paying rent. I don't miss paying the bills. <laughs> don't, I've been like this for three years, so I've kind of adapted to everything. So this is like normal life, I guess, for me now. When I lived in Sheffield in the UK, it's nice to have, to have like a place where you can go climbing and it's always there, a place where like, the pub across the road that's like has jazz nights on Wednesdays, you know, and on Mondays it's open mic, and like you know, you know if you go there, people will be there that you know. This is like a fixed kind of community kind of thing, I guess. I had this, but I never had, I never had time to do it anyway. I was always tired, or I was working overtime or offshore or on the weekends even so. It's nice to it's nice to have friends that you can just go around like just call and be like yeah let's do this but, but at the age of 25 it got to the point where like everyone was working and suddenly I was so used yeah suddenly you couldn't just hang out with your friends anymore you know like everyone everything got serious how do you fund your journey yeah 
So the first thing was to spend as little as possible. And then, um, so spending 10 or 11 euros a day on average, this is what I was doing. And then I had to find a way to make 11 euros a day, which is, it seemed, it's like starting small, you know. 11 euros a day, um, I started to do this um, through the blog. So, oh, there's been this whole evolution. So the blog started to get popular. Actually, before the blog, I was busking on the streets. You make you make money for food. I was like juggling fire and with some other people playing music. And then the blog started getting popular. I started to see like opportunities. So in the, so then I put advertisements on the blog at first. That got me my 10 euros a day and then it went up and then I found out there was a point where I made quite a bit with advertising on the blog and then I took that all off because I didn't like adverts and then I, then I made money with Amazon affiliates, affiliate thing and um, a few other affiliate programs. So this is in the same time, advertising affiliate programs on the blog. I don't do that anymore. I made some money with YouTube. Um, so these are these are like all tri small trickles. I sold some photographs, um, and each one alone is just small trickles of money. But then, so now the main way, my main income is through my ebook, and I this is my favorite way of making money because it, it's. Um, it's a, it's a better deal for both sides, you know, my audience and me. So now I can take all the adverts off my blog. I don't have to show people crappy adverts. I can give them an ebook that has a lot of value and in return I get money. What thoughts did you have before starting? I thought I'd have like one year and then I'd probably have to come back. But I, but I knew I didn't want to come back to the same job, and I knew I didn't want to go back to the same life. I knew that if I if I did come back after a year, I'd come back with a fresh perspective, a different way of looking at life and work. But it happened that the blog started to get popular, and so um, and so I, I've I've just been treading water since, really, trying to get better at photography trying to get better at writing all these things and trying to get better at blogging I don't think it was that I had the courage really it was just that I was so bored I mean I'd, I'm never bored I've always got things to do but for the first time ever like I found myself so bored like I was I was <laughs> it wasn't a bad job it was my problem I went I went to the wrong job I guess I was just kind of like whatever <laughs> if it doesn't work at least I've at least uh, I've cured my boredom a bit and at least I've tried at least I've like uh, tried to work on something and had some like tangible goal something to work towards that's all I I guess that's what I wanted so it wasn't I wouldn't say it was for me it wasn't really courage I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't really. I, it sounds it sounds uh, reckless, but that's how my head was. I didn't really care that much. I'm not. I'm definitely not saying other people shouldn't care and be careless. <laughs> um, but I think you have to take some risks because other, otherwise things are just everything's just like this steady. And you have to have bad times. You have to have the good times. What downsides are there? There are so many things to go wrong. I mean, compared to living in a house, everything feels pretty delicate. Like, yeah, someone can just... Um, it's easy to break into a van, I guess. That's scary. The thought of that is really scary. The thought of someone driving away your van and your home is scary. I mean, also doing so much driving, even if you're 
I mean, I'm not a good driver, but even if I was, <laughs> um, there were there were so many crazy drivers, especially in Italy. <laughs> Someone can just drive into the side of you, just in an instant, and just like that, everything is like everything's broken. You're living in a, a van with an engine, and engines break all the time, and this is always a possibility. And um, so this is the other downside. And then, but also I've learned, one of the things that I've learned is how to fix things, <laughs> fix the engine. I've learned a lot about mechanics and uh, engines. I've broken down maybe, I've broken down a few times, three or four times. I feel like I've got a lot from doing this. I feel like I've got on so many levels, like there's all the practical things, like even just making this, even just making the van before I even set off, I learned so much intensely, like working 10 hours a day, I, I just, it was constant learning, like my bottom was instantly cured. I just feel like I've learned things that I couldn't have got from not if I hadn't have traveled, you know. How does travel affect you? Yeah, so I learn about the things around me, other countries, other cultures and stuff, although my history is still really bad. <laughs> um, and I've learned a lot about myself. So, and also it's good to have, you get a, a unique perspective that's difficult to get in normal life you know you can step back and uh look at from a from um a distance and see like see it in a different way and uh, i think that's valuable any advice for newbies don't take advice from someone who hasn't done what you want to do don't take advice from people just because they're older or they're they're a manager or they're in some high position in some you know some authority i mean okay take advice but take it with a pinch of salt i guess is what i'm saying and also a lot of people's advice is tainted with their own beliefs or fears maybe so when i was doing this when i told everyone i was going to do this you get a lot of people saying, oh, that's excellent, and stuff like this. And then you get some people saying, like, but how are you going to do this? But how are you, like, you can't do this. Just because they believe, it's that's their belief. You don't have to know how to do everything before you, for you to start, you know. So just take the first step, I guess. For me, the first step was um, buying a van. I had no idea what to do after that. But... But what I learned was the next the, the next step comes. And so like I've learned about this trust, you know, the next step comes. You just just do that. Just do that. <laughs> Get the van. Make it into your home or buy one that's already a home. And then the next step will appear, I think. Because if you try to figure everything out at first, it's impossible and you'll never start, you'll be overwhelmed. And I, I want everyone to just have a nice time. <laughs> is that a hippie thing to say? It might be bad for the economy, but what isn't?